And I know that yeah. you're working passionately. In fact, as of the recording of this, you just made a huge uh, move in your career to, as you called it in your blog, taking the plunge um, where you're now involved in this full time. So you, you're making this your life and, and so committed to it that you're putting your name out there. I, I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot about Amy Kubal in the coming years uh, as it relates to you know promoting nutritional health and the, the paleo concepts that you believe so strongly in. And I just love the fact that you come at it from an RD, traditionally trained RD, um, and you figured all this stuff out on your own. Um, are you seeing that as a trend amongst your other RDs, or are they most of them still stuck in and mired in the conventional wisdom? Well, we are hoping not. Um, that's where the uh, the RD network kind of comes in with with Rob. And there, there right now we've got three of us um, in the network, counting myself. Yep. And um, we are are trying to spread the word among our profession. And we're going to have my my last day is this coming Friday, and there's going to be a lot. A lot of work and time invested into getting the word out to this group and seeing where the interest it lies. I know I get a lot of inquiries from people that are want to go into nutrition, but they don't want to um, spend the time going to school to learn about the USDA pyramid and and all the the stuff that they know they're going to have to learn in college and you know ultimately what I tell these people is that's really not what you learn in getting a nutrition degree that stuff that they they assume that you've already know you already know right. um a lot of what you're going to learn is the science behind it um You'll learn the, the biochemistry, the um, how to counsel people, how to work with people, how to um, medical nutrition therapy for different diseases and stuff. And now there are many things you will not agree with, but there are a lot of things you need to hear just from case studies to uh, what works, what doesn't in certain instances like one one instance that I like to use is that when you're dealing with someone that has, say, um, I'm going to go gross on you here, short bowel or um, IBS or some GI, some GI related conditions. Right. Um, too much fat is not going to be a pretty thing. Um, and, you know, for for a lot of people, I would recommend a relatively higher fat diet, you know, good fats. But for some of these people, it's going to run right through them. And, and the same goes with, with vegetables. Um, the way that we prepare them for some of these people is going to look very different from the way you and I would eat them. Um, we can't give certain people a bowl of uh, raw salad because that's not going to end well for them, um, so to say. But if we, there are methods that work for and again it's very individual for people like we start to to heal their gut especially like with the ulcerative colitis with blended vegetables and things that I wouldn't recommend for like you because of the the form the form that it's in you know we want to keep it as whole as possible but for some of these people that is the only way and you know you have to learn these techniques and tips somewhere, you know, you don't just fall out and, oh, okay, everybody, your diet looks like this. So school really helped me get a sense of what is different in these different situations. Why is this happening? And what can this do in that situation? Right. 